Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. This is this video is going to be for the uh, new pitch notes that EA released for FIFA 19. We're going to be looking into uh, the pitch notes. I've already read a few of these things, so we're going to look into uh, what EA have been saying recently. And uh, I'm going to give my thoughts because I have a lot to say after I read these notes, right? So we're going to get into it, right? So this is all uh, blah, blah, blah stuff right here. Uh, for gameplay, there are four areas of focus in the title update. Dynamic tactics, jumping volley, kicks, goalkeepers, and goal kicks. Okay. Dynamic tactics. To allow for more control over your dynamic tactics during a match, it is now possible to make changes to your game plans um, from the pause menu during a match. This will allow for even more control over your tactics during a match and provide greater ability to respond to the tactics of your opponent. In addition, when you swap players while in the balanced game plan, those swaps where possible will now be applied automatically to your other game plan. So, for example, if you swap your striker uh, and center back in your balanced game plan, after that center back gets a red card, that change would now be applied to the other four game plans where possible. In some cases, if your balanced game plan uses a vastly different formation than your other game plans, the automatic swap may not be possible. May not be possible. With the ability to make adjustments to your game plans in the middle of a match, you can still make the changes in the pause menu. I'm not sure if they fix the issue of when you pause the game to make the changes from there. Uh, if it like changes the positioning of your players, because that actually was a thing. Um, and I'm not sure if that's what they mean by that. Uh, I'm not really thinking about reading that, uh, reading too much into that, because that's in regards to whether a center back gets a red card and stuff. And I'm not really like looking into that too much. But when I'm on balance and I need to change a center back to a striker, uh, it shouldn't change my player's positioning. So if, if that's what it means, and that's cool. Jumping volley kicks. We have the scene. Uh, we have seen the feedback from the community around jumping volley kicks, such as bicycle kicks or scissor kicks. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have waited for community feedback for that because it was really obvious that it was broken before you released the game. Uh, happening too often, sometimes in unrealistic situations, and they were too accurate. As a result, we have fixed a couple of issues uh, that were causing these kicks to happen too often, and we also made. Uh, a change to bring the likelihood of successfully executing one of these kicks more in line to what would be on a scene on the real football pitch. Also, you need to make it back into L trigger and not just holding B and then your player does it himself because no one wants to do a bicycle kick if they don't mean to do a bicycle kick. Like it's nice when you do a bicycle kick and you're actually doing the L trigger, right? Or L2. Um, there was an issue that was causing players that didn't mean the agility attribute requirement that didn't meet the agility attribute requirements or who didn't have the flare trait, FIFA 19 trait pitch notes article. We'll, we'll look into that afterwards. Uh, to perform these kicks without the player holding the flare shot button, which is basically L2 or L, uh, L2 or LT, um, uh, which has now been resolved. These kicks were also some, sometimes happening in unrealistic situations, such as when the attacking player was surrounded by two or three defending players near post corners, uh, which should no longer be happening. Players that had high agility attributes were also executing the animation for these kicks too fast. Uh, making them more effective than intended. Um, when looking at the effectiveness of these kicks, we found that they were not being impacted enough by error, which was in, resulting in a high percentage of these kicks being more accurate and powerful than intended. Uh, we have increased the likelihood that these kicks will be impacted by error, which will potentially result in the kicks having less accuracy, less speed, and less spin. So that's good. They're nerfing bicycle kicks, but like I said, this is stuff that should have been fixed before the game released. I'm gonna. I know. I know for a straight fact. I'm gonna see people in the comment section saying that no game is perfect. But guys, this is a this is a reoccurring theme with FIFA every single year. That bicycle kick you can notice in the first thirty games. Okay, anybody who tested their game at the studios should have been like, you know what? I'm holding B, and the accuracy, power, and precision of these bicycle kicks are really overpowered. We should probably fix this before the game is released. It's never like this any year. And the near post corners have been overpowered since last year in the beginning of the game. So because they're still overpowered, it just goes to show you that they didn't fix it, right? And it's probably still going to be the same, right? Like near post corners will still probably be really effective in terms of accuracy. Like, yeah, the bicycle kicks are nerfed, but the heading from it isn't going to be nerfed. And you know that uh, if you put a guy near post, it still won't do anything because they'll still... Uh, score bangers from headers from those angles. Like, you guys know how they score from near post corners. It's probably not going to be nerfed yet, uh, to be honest. Because, again, they're talking more about the bicycle kicks more than the near post corner itself. It's cool if you put a guy there. You put a guy standing there. First of all, they should put the tallest guy there in the near post corners because it's the most effective. Yeah. Right? Um, the shorter dudes shouldn't even be in the box. Right? Like, it should only be the tall dudes. Like, if I have Fabinho as a CDM, 
I expect Fabinho to be the guy at the, CD, at the near post area so I can avoid those near post goals as much as possible, right? I have games... Two. Excuse me. I have games where my Conte... Not, not I have games. When Conte was in my team, Conte was the one that was playing the near post corners for me. It's like they're, I don't know, they're not listening, right? Because the near post corners have been overpowered since last year. And if you're gonna if you're gonna make them effective, at least put the tallest guy in the CDM in the near post area, and then the tall guys collectively in the in the in the box blocking the right people because you don't want to have a Conte in the box because that just doesn't make any sense, you know. Um, uh, let's see by error, which will potentially result in the kicks having less accuracy. Okay, so less speed, less spin. Uh, in situations where executing one of these kicks would be easier, such as when the attacker pops the ball up to themselves in order to do a bicycle kick, the effect of this change will be less noticeable, uh, while it will be more noticeably in a situation where executing one of those kicks would be more difficult. So just trying to hit a bicycle kick on a cross ball that was coming in at high velocity. Okay. To give some context of how this change will impact these kicks, we will have an example of 100 bicycle kicks being taken by Gareth Bale prior uh, to the title update. Uh, prior to the title update and after the title update, the blue lines show uh, shots uh, would have been on the net, which could end up as saves by the keeper or could end up being goals. While the red lines shots that would have been off target, as it's shown below after, after the title update, a much higher number of shots are missing the net, and the spread of where the shots are targeted is much more varied uh, than before the title update. Pre title update. So, this is how effective bicycle kicks were, right? It's pretty much like every single shot. Right, very rarely missed. Now it's like missing a little bit more, but the bicycle kicks are still somewhat effective. Like it's not impossible to do, but they still do it. See, I don't like. Obviously, I don't mind this. It's not because the thing is, right? It's not like it should be impossible to do a bicycle kick. That's not what I'm saying, right? It's just that it's overpowered and unnatural in this game. Like, if your player is by himself on a cross, right, and the ball's in the air and it's set up perfectly, and the other person hits a bicycle kick. Fair play, he should score. You know, if he has a good player, like if it's like Gareth Bale, Ronaldo, even Neymar and stuff, if he scores a free bicycle kick where no one is around him, fair play, man, right? I'm talking about like crosses that there is some sort of element of skill in it because the crosses themselves are not skilled. They still have not uh, executed a way of making crosses skilled. Like you just randomly put the ball in and your player wins the ball. They have yet to add a mechanic that allows you to defend these crosses crosses better. In Pez, they don't have a mechanic either, but what they have is super cancel. So if you if you have your fullback defending against the guy on the side, you can super cancel with your center back to position him in a better way because the movement in general in FIFA when you're just using the left stick is really annoying. But because of super cancel, your player can move freely left, right, up, down, top, left, top, right more easily so you can position him better uh, if you think the cross is going to come in in a certain way. It's still random. There's still a random element to it that people still win the headers, but there's just more control over trying to defend against it, right? Goalkeepers. This one is about like the parries, man, because so many times my goalies should be able to catch the ball and they just like parry it away. Uh, we identified some rare instances of goalkeepers not behaving as expected and have made fix to these, situ as to these issues. Uh, direct from the patch notes from both the gameplay and visual sections, here are the issues that are that were fixed. Uh, rarely keepers were not picking up the ball when it was close to them. That's true. They literally like glitched out. Uh, rarely keepers were trapping the ball outside of the box despite an attacking player being near them instead of clearing the ball. That happened a lot too. Rarely when the keeper was rushing out of the net, you were unable to take control of him using the move keeper controls. I hate move keeper controls. Uh, rarely after positioning your keeper with the move keeper controls, a keeper would dive out of the way of the incoming shots. Um, rarely keepers were not picking up the ball after knocking it down with a tip down save that they should do more often, by the ways. If a shot is directed right at them, it makes no sense that they parry it to the left side. So stupid. Um, rarely when the keeper was making a save close uh, to the 18 yard, uh, yard line or the byline, they would perform a slow animation while getting up uh, when it was not appropriate. Uh, rarely the keeper would start to dive in one direction to make a save and would instead animate as diving in the other direction. Rarely the keeper would start to dive in one direction to make a save and would instead dive. Oh. Okay, so they didn't... I don't know. So this is the keeper fixes. I don't know if they fixed the no animation from close shots. I'll show you guys which one I'm talking about. Um, so this is a clip the other day. Of the goalies having no animation from close shots. I'm going to lower this because I get so angry that I don't score this. 
not, not even worth taking the extra touch. Oh, this is, no, this is the finesse shot goals. Here it is, this one. So I did a really nice play here, right? Opened up the space, pass the ball to the side, back down, little shield there, bang, bang, take the touch, don't score. Oh, oh sorry, you guys definitely heard that from my mic. So listen, here's my problem, right? And this is the, with the 1v1 finishing. I don't care what goalie is in the net. When you exploit someone's defense like this, and I know what people are going to tell me, Inception, you should have shot near post. It does not make sense to shoot this near post, okay? In FIFA, right, it makes sense. It is a, a skilled concept, right, to take a touch first and then just shoot it across the goal. The goalie was not too close to me, okay? This should be going in every single time, every single time. I don't care who I'm using, it should go in every single time, okay? And this is my problem with the 1v1 finishing. The reason why this should go in every single time is because of how effective their finesse shots are, how effective their crosses are, and how effective their corners from near post are, okay? This should go in every single time, and it doesn't, and that's why I got angry in this clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute this. You guys are gonna see the goalie animation, okay? Look, when I do this play here, right? Take the touch and shoot, right? Should, this has to go in, chat. This has to go in. I don't care what anybody says, this has to go in every time. I don't care if I'm using a bronze player, the 1v1 finishing needs to be better. Look at how his goalies react. I can't slow this down because this is a Twitter clip, but look at how his goalies react. He has the crab walk. He just does this and he does this. This is all he does. He does this and he does this. All I expect, at least from the goalkeeper to do, is do a sliding animation that I will show you guys in a bit, right? Look, so from the close range, the goalie has no reaction. Look, he didn't do anything, right? The goalie had no reaction. If he dove in like this, like, like they did in previous years that would make goalies better from close range, not them better, but finishing better, it would make more sense. Because imagine creating an open space like this, but people can score bullshit goals against you, right? Create this, make that extra pass, boom. Goalie has no animation from up close. And that goes for chip shots. The goalies have no animation for chip shots either. When you chip the ball, they're crab walking. So it just hits their chest and they're just like this. And the ball just goes away. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like this is annoying. I'll show you guys what animation I expect the goalies to do most of the time from 1v1s to make them more effective. So, uh, Matt HD Gamer had this on his video the other day in terms of how the finishing is in this game. And we're going to look into that because they haven't fixed the finishing either, right? Um, it's not this one. It'll be soon here. Don't worry. These, uh, oh, okay. So it's this one right here. So this one, this one right here. Right? Here's the problem with this game, okay? You don't get rewarded for taking the extra touch. The extra touch should be a skilled part of the game, right? Because you understand that the angles should work like that, okay? Because it makes sense. You take the extra touch to get the better angle. And you see that I do that here with Mane, right? He pushes out the center back, boom. I take that touch right there so that instead of my angle being faced outwards like it is on his first touch, it is more in the 90 degree angle and upwards. This little triangle area right here, right? I take that touch more on the inside, right? I take the shot, he completely scuffs it. You see that dive animation that the goalie does? I expect the di that dive animation to be used most of the times from 1v1s, okay? Look at the way that the goalie dives towards me. That's what I expect every single time. Because if I chip him, it would work. If I do the chip, it would work. And if I do this driven shot across goal, it would also work from the 1v1 in a good angle, okay? You guys will see the example from the replay. Right? Arrow obviously hits the target. You could see I'm hitting the target. But look at how the goalie is positioned against me, okay? And look at how he dives, right? You see how he dives like that with his legs facing forward? You see that? And then his arm is up. When you do an animation that is consistent like that on 1v1 finishing, this area right here is where the shot should be going. And they completely scuff the shot. 
He scuffs it completely on a, on a card. This is Sadio Mane with a chemistry style of 99 and 86 composure, right? This shot right here needs to go in with a player like Mane, Son, Roberto Firmino. I don't give a shit which rare gold card it is that has at least 75 finishing from this angle, okay? This shot needs to be going in. And this animation that the goalie does needs to be used more often, okay? Because if this animation happens more often, it makes sense that you do a driven shot across goal because it does make sense, okay? Arm is up, don't shoot it with regular power. Driven shot it, you got the goal. 1v1 finishing, you deserve it. It's your fault, it is your fault that you're about to concede this because you manually choose a center back, you manually move him to the left side, and I am through with Mane, take the extra touch, and then I miss it completely. This is why this game is frustrating, okay? Because that animation from close range that your goalies do not do is really, really infuriating. So I don't know if they fixed that yet. So I get really passionate when I talk about these things because EA, EA is just a questionable company in general. Goal kicks. We saw community reports of some problems with the goal kicks, especially that it was possible to use goal kicks to generate an unrealistic goal scoring opportunity in game modes where a human player... What's this? I don't know about this. Uh, we saw the community reports of some problems with goal kicks, specifically that it was possible to use goal kicks uh, to generate an unrealistic goal scoring opportunity in game modes where a human player was controlling both the, play the goalkeeper uh, and an attacking player such as in FIFA Pro Clubs. To correct this, we have resolved an issue where defenders were not reacting properly to an attacking player running behind a defensive line uh, and an issue where the ball was traveling too fast off a goal kick where the target of the kick was very far down the field. To show the differences that these changes make, here is a pre-title update and post-title update video of a goal kick in Pro Clubs where the attackers are trying... Okay. Uh, notice on the map, mini map how the attacker is positioned after the, def uh, after the defending line and that the defenders aren't reacting uh, to the presence post-title update. I never saw this, by the way, because I have no idea about this. Maybe it's like more of a Pro Clubs thing. Okay, that kick actually makes better, so that's a good improvement. Being it more direct, that actually makes more sense. So that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, FIFA Ultimate Team. We have seen many players enjoying playing and competing in Division Rivals since the launch of FIFA 19. Uh, yeah, if you're in Division 4 or 5. It's been great to see all the positive responses. That being said, we know this, that some players have been having a tough time finding matches. And so we have started to implement some changes to Division Rivals pre-match flow. Uh, in an effort to make it easier for these players to get into a match. Direct from the patch notes, here are the changes that we made in this title update. We have made changes to division rivals pre-match flow in an effort to reduce the difficulty of some players finding a match. Your, your opponent's foot club established date will no longer be displayed. Your opponent's foot club name and squad name will no longer be displayed. Your opponent's online ID um, will no longer be displayed on the screen with one exception. You will still be able to see your opponent's online ID if you use the list members button. I don't know what that is which we are working to remove in a future uh, title update. I don't know what list members button is. What is that? We are looking to continue to make changes in this area uh, in future title updates when and if available. Here's what the new screen looks like in game. And as mentioned in the patch notes, we are continuing to work. So again, this is something that like, it's not, I'm not trying to be negative guys, but this is like common sense, right? Like your division rivals, division rivals, your matchmaking is harder than foot champs. This should have been added before. You know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't something that you need your community to tell you about, right? PC audio, don't really care about that. I mean, it's good that they changed it. It's good. But it's stuff that should have been already added, guys. Like, it's... These patch notes, these patch notes are just fixes that should have already been made. And I know that there's going to be people that are going to tell me no game is perfect. But, like, these are groundbreaking things, guys, right? Like, the bicycle kicks being overpowered. They play their game. They can see that it's overpowered. You don't need your community to tell you that, hey, I'm only holding B, but my players are taking... Bro, chat, in my, in my draft game, it wasn't my draft game, it was my division rivals game. I think it was like my fifth or sixth game where freaking Amrick Laporte, Laporte hit a disgusting bicycle kick and it hit the crossbar. I still remember this. With his 
it was his left foot or his right foot, whichever one it was from out. It was it was just on the 18 yard box or just outside or just inside. And I was like, well, that's overpowered. And that was only in a few games, man. Like, this should never have happened. Division rivals uh, menu screen should never have happened. Your goalie's being stupid every single year in, t in the simplest things, like picking up the ball and stuff, should never be happening. Like, none of this stuff is, is, is beneficial. Like, uh, do we have to buy this game in Christmas for them to actually make a game that is going to be, like, somewhat sustainable? Like, I'm trying... I'm start I'm... I'm sorry about being negative, but this company is annoying, man. It's annoying, dude. This company is annoying, man. People who defend the state of this game is annoying. And the fact that they're never going to fix their servers, I know they won't fix their servers, man. I know that we're going to have inconsistent gameplay for so... If they, if they fix inconsistent gameplay, I will shut my mouth for the rest of my life, okay? If they fix inconsistent gameplay. But... Dudes, absolutely no change to 1v1 finishing. That arrow aiming the target and your player still missing is still going to be a thing. So the game is still going to revolve around getting the angle to finesse shot. I, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, guys. Never throw hate at these guys, EA, like EA Corey, Zaro. These are cool guys, man. Like they're just, they're just doing their job of relaying this information to us in the community. My judgment is more for the people who are working on the gameplay and for the people who work on their servers and just EA as a company in general, because you guys need to understand and no other, no other community would accept the shit that EA throws at us. Okay. In this game, they throw crap at us every single year and people are just like, we accept it because it's football. Listen, guys, I've already mentioned this to people all the time, man. If it wasn't for content creation in this game, I would have quit three years ago, man. After seeing the, the pattern that EA are on every single time, it's not worth it. Because these are things that are general, basic things that should never be happening, and they do. Like dynamic tactics, your players being switched. Oh, but Inception, it's a new feature. Listen, man. I understand if there's bugs. Like, you see that goal kick thing? Uh, like from pro clubs, I understand if they couldn't find something like this because I didn't even know about this shit. Like this is this is some this is some next level stuff right here. This goal kick stuff where the guys threw on goal and stuff, I understand that completely. I I I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay, but when you're talking about like division rivals changing your screens, that was obvious, right? Bicycle kicks, obvious. Goalkeepers actually picking up the ball, obvious. Now, whether these issues are easy to fix or not easy to fix on their side, the fact of the matter still remains. No other game has this many problems in their game when it's released every single year. Okay? Black Ops. I played Black Ops. What I'm going to tell you what Black Ops needs right now, they maybe need a buff on some of their SMGs. Their AR, the ICR, might be too accurate with the double grip. I don't know. This is just an example. They might like it like that, right? And the nine bang from the battle royale is super, super overpowered, right? That's it, right? And if you were gonna be like, oh, but you can't compare an FPS to a sports game. Guys, you guys need to understand, man. I have been complaining about the same things for three plus years and the inconsistent gameplay thing for five plus years, okay? Five plus years. There's nobody in this community that has been complaining about the inconsistent gameplay for as long as I have. I have videos dating back to FIFA 15 of inconsistent gameplay. No one ever used to complain about that shit back then, okay? Listen, I'm getting tired of certain comments, man. And not from you guys, but just in, these, are, these are the general comments. I'm tired of people saying that you have to send clips to EA to show them the inconsistent gameplay. That is not the case at all okay i have gone to their studios and i have told them about their inconsistent in, inconsistent gameplay to their face okay i've done it to their face and they ignored me i showed them vital parts i've sent them multiple clips to multiple devs in the ea industry okay multiple to dune and to teebs to 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 rob to uh to core like i've sent so many clips trying to show different examples of good and bad gameplay. I have tried to tell EA, 
I am willing to give up my own time to go to your studios and show you, oh, look, this gameplay is good. Oh, look, this gameplay is bad. Because it's been a thing since FIFA 15, and they show no interest in trying to fix it. None. There's no interest because if it's been an issue for five plus years, there is no excuses, okay? I have made multiple forum posts, Reddit posts, talked about every key change that it makes to the game when your gameplay is good and bad. Listen, man, I understand if you don't get bad and good gameplay, if your gameplay is the same all the time, but there's people in this world that do get this gameplay all the time, okay? And it's really shit, really really shit we don't have simple solutions of being able to hard reset our console which by the ways you shouldn't have to do anyways to fix that issue because it's still the same thing okay Phew. i'm sorry for getting passionate about it but i expected them to at least before like do would they t would they took a shot when they were testing this game did they not see that the shots that their arrows were aiming at on simple opportunities were not hitting the target properly. I don't know, man. Like, chat, I'm annoyed because this title update is not even available yet. And we're going to have to wait for another one to potentially still not get 1v1s fixed. Or the goalie animation from up close. I don't know if this is going to, if this, if these goalie fixes is going to fix it. I don't know if it's going to fix it. But it's just, I don't know, man. You guys want to know what my ideal gameplay is? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what my fair judgment of gameplay is. You want to hear it? Okay. Here it is. You have to nerf near post corners 100%. No questions asked. No questions asked. You need to fix the animation of the goalkeepers when they're close to your player. Your, your player, if he's a good player, should be able to chip the goalie when timed properly. Most of the times like you can in Pez because it's a 1v1 and you deserve to be in that position, right? You should be able to use the Mbappe skill move to get past the goalkeeper. Because the Mbappe skill move, if you guys don't know what the Mbappe skill move is, it's when you hold LB or L1 and you do the fake shot. That skill move, do you know why it was used in real life? It was used to get past the goalkeeper. Try to use that in this game and nothing will happen. If you do that 1v1 against the goalkeeper and it's an effective thing to use every single time, no problem. Because again, if you have the time and the space to be able to use that skill move to pass the goalkeeper, it should be going in. That's the that was the point of that skill move, right? When Mbappe used it in real life, when he passed that passed the goalkeeper and then shot with his left foot. If you want to keep your finesse shots being effective, be my guest. You want to keep your defensive AI being overpowered, be my guest. I trust chat. I hate these two, but listen, I'm accepting. I'm accepting certain things. Okay. Well, let's just start over just just to just to re recap and me not getting too carried away. Listen, finesse shots, keep it the way you want to keep it, right? Um, uh, finesse shot, keep it the way you, you want to keep it. Defensive AI, keep it the way you want to keep it. But when I get to 1v1 on good angles and I shoot across goal on a proper shot and I need to see the goalie's animation every single time, I need to see which different scenarios. Because in Pez, I was learning the animations of the goalie to understand what type of finish I had to do in those areas. I need to see the animations of the goalkeeper. I need to see what animation he does for me to be able to consistently score on the 1v1s, yeah? I should be able to take a touch and then score it. Not do a first-time shot because first time I could do a first-time shot with Zaha's left foot, three-star weak foot with poor finishing and composure, and it'll be better than me taking a touch and shooting it, yeah? Again, near post corners, you have to nerf them. That's it. You want to keep your defensive AI overpowered? You want to keep your finesse shots overpowered? Be my guest. But when I'm 1v1 with the goalkeeper, you better make those things effective, man. You better make those bad boys effective because there is far more elements to score a 1v1 than there is to get an angle on a finesse shot and just shoot it because the time finishing it, time, time finesse shots are super effective. I don't mind that that's a thing because listen, if someone is parking the bus and it's hard to get in behind the defense, keep your finesse shots. That's fine. So that way where there's a way to score against these park the, park the bus noobs, right? But when I get 1v1, I better be able to score it, man. And, I, and, I, and when I hit the target and I hit a good shot and you're the one that misses, that's a huge problem. I don't want to keep going, guys, because this video is already long as it is. Uh, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I don't want to keep going because you guys know how I am. Um, this is uh, an irrelevant patch, in my opinion, because these are things that should have been fixed before the game was released. Uh, I'm going to be trying out the game, obviously, 
when the patch is released and going to still be playing it as a content creator at people need to get that in their minds as a content creator, because I would have stopped three years ago, guys, I'm telling you, man, as a content creator, I will play it. Okay. That's pretty much it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'll see you guys later. Peace.